Greetings, explorers, or should I say, investigators. Today, we shall be showing you the process of making a foam cast using the candlestick mold that we made in the last video. You can see here we're going to work with our two part foam uh, from Smooth On, and we're going to pour equal portions. And we're just going to give you an example of what we're working with today so you guys can see the process of the foam rising the foam that we are working with is going to be a pretty strong foam and it will be very expansive um, we are using a release uh, from a different company so we're going to give it a quick test to see if my release is going to work with the foam mold today so we're using the Polytech 2300 release with a smooth on flex foam uh, ITX so when we pour the foam today that foam is actually going to rise so uh, rise by six times greater than the amount that we mix so this will be important later on when we actually go to pour the candlestick holder. But you can see there the foam is rising. And that's quite a difference. So pretty awesome stuff. Here's something fun. So while you're mixing the foam, you can tell that the A and the B parts are beginning to react because you will feel the cup starting to warm up. So that shows you that it actually gets to about 107, 108 degrees there while it's going through the rising process. But that does look like it came out pretty good. Excellent. So now the first step is, is we made the uh, silicon mold last, uh, last week. So now we are gonna make the, uh, the uh, box to encase that mold. So we're gonna just do some quick cuts. We're using a uh, simple pine to do the construction. We're gonna use a radial arm saw to cut them to height. So we'll need the four sidewalls. <clears throat> so I'm gonna cut four pieces exactly the same that you see here. As we're making this, we're going to try to make this pretty close to the exact size of the silicon mold so that it's going to have a really tight uh, fit. Once we're done with this, uh, the box should be pretty neat. Uh, it will be hinged and we're going to have a, a nice latch on it and things like that. But um, it's one of those things where you want to do a really good job on certain things to give the uh, you know strength to everything you're doing because making that silicon mold in the beginning that was a very uh, expensive process and uh, very also very time consuming so you want to make sure you keep that thing in good shape because the whole goal is hopefully that you're going to be able to make uh, multiple castings using it over the next few years. Of course we love the game Clue. So this will be fun when we actually do a live action role play, a LARP version of it. We're going to uh, make some modifications to our store and we're going to have an event where everybody comes in and does a Clue. So here we're going to do use a table saw, we're going to uh, cut the boards to the correct width now so we've got them all cut to height and of course the big trick here is uh, whenever you're doing projects like this stay focused when you're cutting wood it's always kind of interesting to me whenever you get something at the store you never realize just how much uh, efforts put into making certain things so I always thought it was kind of good for everybody to be able to see everything that we're doing. And it shouldn't take too much longer. And this 
second pieces are a little bit wider. Excellent. One more. Perfect. Obviously, if you're ever using a table saw, you never reach across the blade. Make sure you only come at it from this side. Never get close to the blade if you can avoid it. All right, there we go. There's my neighbor. Hi, neighbor. All right, and that's it's as simple as it gets, just like that. Excellent. So let's assemble the box. So as we put this together, you're going to see a mixture of things where um, we're going to have uh, different washers. Uh, we're going to be able to expand out and adjust the, the, the wood design as we go. We just want to make sure this is tight enough to where those pieces of um, the two pieces of the mold press really tightly together without squishing it. And then I do like to pre-drill most of my stuff. I don't want to have a any of the wood split while I'm putting things together. That way you don't have to make extra cuts later on. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to screw the box completely together using screws and then we're going to stick a hinge and a hasp on it. But this will get the box in the perfect shape that we need. Excellent. Everything takes a little bit of time. And these are just uh, simple dry roll, drywall screws that we're using to join everything together. Perfect. When we go to pour the cast, um, it's actually turned out really good. So. Um, I did uh, pour a test run and so you're going to see that at the very end of the video you're going to see the first one that I poured. The uh, release, what that is, is um, the uh, Polytech 2300 that we had earlier. That is a coating that you can spray onto uh, different surfaces, different molds, so that when you pour things like foam in there that foam won't stick to the mold and uh, that way they that helps it pop out easy enough we had several alternatives that we could have used to uh, put in the mold but uh, we've been using the uh, polytech for many years this is my first time working with foam so this was a fun experiment for me. I've done lots of the uh, plastic, the resin pours. The foam is pretty fantastic. And we're hoping to do a lot more of these for everybody. So we'll be making all kinds of strange foam things. There we go. Let's take off those clamps. So everything's screwed together now. So now we're going to put on the hinge. That is a piano hinge. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna kind of use smaller screws to tack it down. But later on, we're gonna use some longer ones so that we can make some minor adjustments to uh, encase the, uh, the mold a little bit better. We're gonna try to get an almost exact fit if we can, and we're gonna use washers to make those adjustments. <clears throat> All right. Once we get the hinge on, we will 
flip the box over and we will put another piece on there. We needed one more screw. Excellent. All right. Now you see the little gap there. That gap will go away. So you'll see what we do to fix that. So here's the hasp. You just want something that will hold the mold closed as you do things. A little more pre-drilling. All right. This whole process kind of goes over a couple days. go straightforward. So once we get that hasp put on, now we're gonna remove all the, oh, we gotta put it on the bottom, of course. And then we're gonna remove a few of the, the screws so that we can make that hinge actually functional. And the bottom's not gonna matter too much on this. So we're just gonna give it a couple of flush edges. That's what it looks like so far. So the uh, top part's wide open so we can uh, pour the foam into it. But you're also gonna see us, we're gonna be doing a really cool lid on top. All right, there you go. Now you notice that it's not quite seated right because obviously the uh, silicon expands so we're gonna do a little adjustment on the hinge we're gonna space that out a little bit and then that gap that you see there we're gonna be able to tighten that gap up there you go so now we're putting in longer screws and then we're gonna put in a, some spacers so just uh, some small washers So we'll put these in and we'll give it a test. And I think we'll put in a second layer of washers. It needed to be spaced out a little bit more. A little better. One more time. All right, fantastic. Right, put those screws back in, this should do it. And then we'll be able to screw those three screws in and be able to tighten up that gap. Should work out perfect. So once we get the box all around the mold. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a lid. 
So when I first did this, when I ran my test mold, you'll see the lid that I made for the first run. And um, you'll see that that lid has one big hole in the middle. So the first run, uh, what we're trying to do is as that foam is rising, we want to create a little compression to where the foam gets more, comp uh, more compressed as it rises. So it's not able to just uh, expand out of the mold. We want it to be pressurized and it kind of helps the, the foam get pushed into all the different corners and the nooks and crannies. And it helps show the details and the wood grain and things like that a lot better when you uh, kind of compress the foam as it's expanding. But what happened with the first one, the first one I noticed, it was a little tough to be able to slide it out. I cut it to exact size where I probably should have made it a little extra long. And you'll see that on the one uh, that when we actually pour the um, candlestick holder, so you'll see that I made an adjustment. But I also, when I did the other holes on the uh, next lid, I decided to make the uh, less uh, less of an opening so it's going to be about half the uh, the dimension on the opening so this hole is much bigger and then I'm going to have four holes but they're going to be much smaller this time so about half of the half the space in the opening which will really help the foam compress a little bit more so you can see I'm slipping in some washers uh, into the each of the plates for the sliding area because I want it to be able to slide here and I didn't want the brackets to pinch it. I want them to hold hold the plate down but I don't want the plate to be pinched. I need to be able to slide it back and forth. So I'm putting a little space in there so that that lid will slide in and out a little easier. So I kind of pre-set up the holes and then I just take it all out real quick and then you'll see I'll put the screws into the plate hang the washers on it and then I'll put it back in that allow me to put a little space and that way that lid piece moves a little easier all right and all we need is one more on the back so that the plate has a stopping point So far, so good. Perfect. All right, that last plate, here we go. Thought about putting a hinge on it, but I think this was uh, far more functional doing it this way. This plate uh, will not need a spacer in between the plate and the wood. So I'm just going to snug that one down. There. We want it to be tight, but not, but we need to be able to slide it out. All right. So here's another thing. So if you've ever had a LARP, uh, like a, like a LARP sword or something like that, they put a, a, um, a fiberglass rod into them to make it rigid. Rigid. The foam is pretty flexible. So right now we're going to design a couple of caps that will go onto the ends of our uh, fiberglass rod that we will be inserting into the candlestick holder mold. So pretty straightforward. It's really neat. Um, we do like again, uh, we've mentioned before, we do a lot of our own 3D designs. I did want to mention when you look at these caps, you'll you'll notice that they seem to have a base on them that is designed for putting um, little miniature figures onto, so kind of a dungeon style looking base. <laughs> because the cool thing is, is that even though I'm making this to put onto a fiberglass core for the mold today, I uh, decided I can have these double as uh, flying stands so if I insert a rod into the top there and I put another one of these on the other side 
I can make a, a flying stand where I can put different size uh, rods in there. And so the whatever creature is flying in our RPG games, uh, you can, you know, for every, you know, make a make them fly. So we thought that would be pretty darn funny. So they're gonna have two uses. So here we are, we've made one of them. Now we're gonna double it up because we're gonna need two. And so 3D printing is really awesome. So we're gonna get to use all the tools today. So this is gonna be uh, creating the, um, the file for doing a 3D print. We're gonna be using the Anycubic again today. Fiberglass, LARP, pin, 01, two of them. And this, uh, the hole on the top there is made for a 10 millimeter, a 10 millimeter rod. So that's how uh, big it is, the, the, how thin it is. So that little hole on top there will hold a 10 millimeter rod. So the cool thing again, I'll be able to use those for my Pathfinder games and my Dungeons and Dragon games as a flying stand. So here's the other thing we're going to do, so uh, we're going to be using the Glowforge here. I needed to put a padding on one of the ends that will be when we will be slipping that piece into the mold. So it'll be resting on, there's a uh, PVC piece at the very end there where, where you, if it was a real candle holder, that's where you would put the candle into it. So we're going to actually put a piece of EVA foam. And uh, yeah, we just use a glowforge to cut out circles. There you go. So those should be the exact size of our little caps that we're making. So now we use a little bit of contact cement. I don't know if you've ever worked with contact cement. Stuff can be really sticky. And uh, whenever you go to stick something together, you get one chance. If you mess up, then you gotta start again. So with contact cement, you're gonna coat one of the sides that you're gluing. It does work really well with foam. And then you're gonna also put glue on the other side that you'll be gluing it to. And then you're gonna walk away. So we're gonna let these two pieces actually cure a little for about 20 minutes. So they're just gonna sit there for 20 minutes like that. And then we're gonna join the two pieces together. And when we do, you just gotta get it right on the first try because once you stick them together, they're not gonna come apart. Soink. Well done. All right. Perfect. So there it is. That'll be one of the caps for our 10 millimeter rod. There's the other cap. And you'll see how they work in just a minute. So the rod we cut is what's well, 10 and a quarter. We're gonna use some hot glue. And we're gonna put these caps onto the fiberglass rod that you see I'm holding in my hand. Got to push it on there pretty good. Perfect. And so this stuff here, um, if you haven't seen it before, uh, this is a wire shrink wrap. Um, it's a heat shrink wrap. So you're just going to uh, hit it with some heat and that will actually shrink really tight. Um, There's an, uh, there's an adhesive on the inside of those wraps. And uh, so when we slide them up over the piece there, and then uh, we're gonna hit it with a, uh, a heat gun, and it's gonna shrink down on that, and it's just gonna give us a whole lot of extra support. The rod and the 3D printed pieces are probably more than strong enough but uh, we wanted to go the extra step here. And this also gives a really clean look to the core, that, the core rod that we're making. So you just hit it with the heat gun. The heat gun is a, uh, actually for doing shrink wrapping of merchandise. So we're using a, a high air, low heat setting, just enough to heat up that little plastic wrap and that'll uh, activate the ad adhesives on the inside there and it's going to really stick those uh, caps onto the rod. Takes no time at all but uh, yeah super fantastic look to it. There you go. Well done. Alright, I think it's time. So there's the mold. 
So there's the old lid with the large hole in the middle. So now we made a new lid that's longer with smaller holes. So that way all the foam will be pushed to the edges instead of pushed out the middle. So we wanted to make sure all that foam gets compressed in there. We wanted to make sure that it moved to the corners completely so that we have a really clean and complete mold. So we're gonna spray that release that we put on the bowl earlier as a demonstration. And this stuff is just kind of a uh, waxy substance that makes it to where uh, if I was to pour a liquid plastic or a foam, uh, it would not stick to our mold. And that way we can use that mold over and over and over again. I will also say that um, the Polytech, uh, one of the reasons we like it is that uh, a lot of the releases when you spray, spray them down, um, you have to let your mold sit for 15, 20 minutes uh, with the uh, Polytech version, um, you do not. You can actually use it right away, even though we did wait 15 minutes to do this one. Um, what I just showed you there, you can see how I sanded down uh, two sides of that mold. That candlestick that I just uh, was turning there, the, the candlestick is thinner in one direction and thicker uh, in the other direction. So it's more of a, it's not round, it's more of an oval. So I thinned up the cap going into it because I wanted to make sure there was enough foam going all around the core pin that were slipping in there. And I didn't want that round section to be sticking out at all. So here, um, we did the math earlier uh, in the last video, so the first video, and that candle mold the candlestick holder mold has it uh, holds uh, 1174 milliliters 1174 milliliters so we're actually going to put about 140 milliliters in each of these cups of the a and b so that's going to total up to about 280. so 280 compared to 1134 um, so this foam though, when we pour it in there, you're going to see it, it's going to expand six times. So we actually poured a little extra here so that as it expands, we want it to compress really well. And you're going to see it push out of the holes on the lid when we slide that lid in. So here we are, we're, we got a, about 140 milliliters in each of these cups. We're going to add some dye to the uh, part B here, so that, that white there, we're gonna add some drops of this dye. Now, that most of these dyes are, are super messy. That's the real reason I'm wearing these gloves right now. It's all about this dye. It gets on your fingers, it'll stay there forever. Perfect, eight drops. And I do often wear uh, cotton gloves under the rubber gloves. I have gloves on usually four or five hours a day, making things, 3D prints, uh, staining, wood boxes and stuff like that. So I try to keep my hands dry and uh, chemical free. So as we mix this, whenever you mix this section, the B section, you wanna get as much air as you can into it. So it's a little bit different than working with the silicon where you don't want any air. You want air to get into this mix. You also wanna get all the nooks and crannies. So you can see it started out white in some certain areas, but I just kinda of kept working it and I made sure that dye mixed in really, really, really well. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that core rod is lined up really well on that, uh, that PVC piece that I have joining the, the very bottom together. So we're gonna make sure that lines up just right. Oh man, here we go. So we're pouring the A into the B. And I think the next time I do this, I'm gonna actually use a, uh, a uh, mixer, a drill mixer, where I put a special mixing device on at the end of my drill and it'll mix it up and aerate it a lot better. And you can just keep mixing. I'm probably mixing here for about 30 seconds, um, but you can definitely tell when it's ready to pour because again, you'll be able to feel it warming up in your hand. And remember this stuff will get 
to about 108 degrees so you definitely will be able to feel the heat and the nice thing is, is that foam's going to harden pretty quick but then we're going to let it cure for a couple hours but the nice thing is is that core rod you know you don't need to put any devices or supports or anything in there because the foam's going to kind of circle around it you can already see it rising up and it's going to kind of hold that core rod right in place for us so we don't have to do anything so here's the one lid so it's got the four holes it slides right in it's a little bit longer so i can slide it out the funny thing is is i forgot to spray release on it so you're going to see at the very last second you're going to see this guy panic <laughs> it's only got eighth of an inch sixteenth of an inch quick spray but the good news is, like I had mentioned earlier, that release is actually really awesome. You do not have to let it dry. It uh, automatically is already pretty slick and waxy. So you see the foam compressing. You see the foam pushing out of the holes. So that is going exactly as planned. That's wonderful. We wait two hours. The funny part on this one is, is we're a... Uh, we're a game store slash uh, LARPing Renaissance Fair styles type store. Um, I had a whole crowd of people watching me do this. So I'm um, having a conversation with them at the same time that I'm doing all this. So it's pretty funny. They're all asking me questions. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice demonstration. Nice opportunity to demonstrate. But you saw the lid slid right off, so the uh, release worked perfectly there. So we're going to pop that hasp. There we go, we'll slide that lovely mold right out. There we go. Oh man, we're almost there. Here we go, open it up. Look at that hot diggity dog. You can see that PVC piece there now, perfect. So now this one here has the core in it. It's pretty rigid, look how rubbery without the core compared to the rigidness of the one with the core. So that's actually probably what you want is something that's a little more rigid. So now we're getting ready for part part three. Look forward to that when we do the latexing and finishing. Thank you for watching. Don't miss the next one.